Hey, I'm Michael, and this is Michael in the Middle. It's an intergenerational relational podcast for people who are interested in better human interaction. I'm glad you're here. Oh, my goodness. Episode 40 of Michael in the Middle. I am so happy um, that uh, we've made it through uh, so many of these uh, moments together. And I want to just say thank you at the outset. Uh, 40 is a milestone. It's uh, also uh, approaching one year since the launch of this podcast. And uh, I'm so excited about the fact that um, folks have attached to it in some meaningful ways. And I'm, I'm really grateful to you for um, being a part of this journey with me. Um, today is another solo effort. Um, I uh, have chosen to do so because of um, some unexpected news that we got as a family over the weekend. Uh, my dad's um, best friend from college and roommate for many years, best man in his wedding, Ron Buddy, uh, as he was known to us, Emmert. Ron Emmert uh, suffered a heart attack last week while on a trip with his wife, Kathy. They were um, prolific travelers, especially in retirement years. Uh, my dad ended up in ministry uh, as a pastor and later administrator in uh, the Church of the Nazarene. Uh, Ron and Kathy, or, or again, Buddy, as we always knew him, uh, was a very faithful lay person. He and Kathy were a part of the Orange, Texas Church of the Nazarene, uh, east of Houston, um, out there. And um, the Emmerts were just very dear friends. They were always a part of uh, our extended family. And um, Buddy and Kathy made a special effort to come across uh, the many miles uh, from Orange to uh, Nashville when my mom died back in November of 2021. It's interesting that uh, uh, Sarah and I are with our two older sons and their families. Uh, Chad and Amy and Reston are here from Salisbury, Maryland, and Brian and Ashley and Braden, Tinley, Lennon, and Hazel are here with us from Sharpsburg, Georgia. Um, our youngest son, Austin, his wife, Rebecca, and their 18-month-old boy, Homer, could not join us on this one, um, but uh, just in part due to Austin's uh, travel around the country uh, on his uh, summer comedy tour, and uh, we're, uh, we're missing them here at the family gathering at Westgate Resort, uh, kind of a vacation timeshare area that my parents bought into back uh, a few years ago in 2004. We've been over here many, many times, um, and uh, my uh, my family is very special to us. My mom and dad didn't come from big families themselves. Uh, they each had one sibling, uh, and my brother and I were the only two children that my mom and dad had, but uh, we had three sons. My brother, Jeffrey, and his wife, Julie, had two daughters, and in December of 2019, um, we were all here together in uh, this uh, very spot, just a few yards away from uh, where I'm filming and recording today. And uh, we were able to get a, a shot at uh, really um, after sundown, uh, there was just enough light for us to take this family photo. And uh, everybody in our family, except for Homer, was a part of that picture. He, uh, he, hadn't, he hadn't come along just yet. But this was a, a crowning moment for my mom. She loved her family dearly and loved it when we could all get together. And it just almost never happened, uh, simply because we're all scattered in different places and parts of the country. And so uh, this, was a, this was a great moment for my mom to be able to get us all in that one picture together. We didn't have very long, even during that time, for us all to be in the one place here in Gatlinburg at the same time. But uh, we treasure these moments and are really having a, a great time here this week with Chad and Brian and their families. My dad did not come with us. Uh, just uh, a little bit of a challenge for him to navigate some of the, uh, some of the, the travel issues 
and even uh, getting up and down uh, in uh, these hills over here in East Tennessee. Uh, we we told him we could drive him to everywhere he would need to get out and use his walker to get in uh, to a building, but he opted to stay home. And as it turns out, it ended up being a little better for him because uh, he will be traveling um, tomorrow. Uh, I'm recording on a Tuesday. He'll fly Wednesday uh, down to Houston where my brother will pick him up and uh, my dad will be there to help participate in the funeral of, uh, of his dear friend, Buddy Emmert, and to uh, pay tribute to a lifetime of friendship. Um, got a, a, a picture here of my dad with um, his dad uh, over there on the uh, far right, if you're able to see the picture. Uh, my dad's in the light-colored uh, jacket there. And then uh, Buddy Emmert, uh, Ron Emmert, is there in that dark sweater. And then uh, on the far left is a man named Joe Russell Pitts. And uh, so for a few folks who might know um, these uh, gentlemen from uh, Oklahoma back in the uh, 50s, um, some might know the name of Joe Russell Pitts. He ended up in politics up in Pennsylvania, I think I understood from my dad. But uh, there in the middle, uh, Talmadge Johnson and, and Buddy Emmert, um, they were fast friends for uh, many, many years, I guess, probably close to almost 70 years. Good buddies, and uh, my dad will be uh, be there to uh, tell Buddy goodbye along with um, a lot of other family and friends. I'm a little emotional sharing this. Um, as you may have seen, the, the title of, of this episode, number 40, is I Saw God Today. Um, uh, there's a there's a lot that has been said as I've been working through this podcast about how we need to try to work on ways to uh, to to bring people together and to uh, do something good um, for someone else. And I, I guess I just have to say that one reason why um, I uh, I am so connected to this in a way is that. Um, you know, my, my own family, um, my, my, my dad, who is still with us, sort of hardwired that kind of thing into me. And uh, I, I'm very grateful for it. My dad has always been interested in, in doing what he could to make a difference in someone's life. And, and I, I'm very grateful for that example. Um, and it reminded me of something that I wrote uh, several years ago, and as I uh, have often done uh, in these solo uh, episodes, I go back to things that I remember having written. Um, they're uh, they're good reminders to me about how um, I feel like I feel like maybe God had spoken to me, and then allowed me to write about it or talk about it, and and potentially. And I speak to, to others as well. So here's uh, here's a little something I wrote a few years ago, and I've done my best to uh, rewrite the language into the present tense. George Strait had a hit in 2008 with an amazing song called "I Saw God Today." Turns out it was his 56th number one hit on the country charts, and it struck a responsive chord uh, with a lot of folks, and I was one of them. And on a warm August day nine years ago, when my dad asked me if I'd be willing to ride with him over to Cookville, Tennessee, to see his old friend Charles Paul, I said yes. We decided that we would go over on a Saturday morning and try to be back uh, to Nashville by lunchtime. Um, Charlie Paul is one of several folks who made deposits in my bank of childhood memories because he was a friend of our family. He's a I guess you could say was especially fond of my grandparents, W.T. and Helen Johnson, but uh, he grew close to my dad over the years too. And so on that day, I went with my dad for, uh, well, three or four different reasons. First, my dad's not just my father. He's also my friend. We like to compare notes on a lot of things. And so time in the car offers a good opportunity to chat 
Another reason I went was because Mr. Paul was in a nursing home and didn't have a lot of visitors besides family. His lovely daughter, April, who met us there, arranged the visit, and uh, we had a wonderful time. I also went because the man, Charles Paul, had a phone in his car in the 1960s. He could sing like a combination of uh, maybe Eddie Arnold and Ray Price. And if you don't know who those people are, look them up because they sound great even to this day on those recordings. He was a really good golfer. He also made golf clubs and would sell you those golf clubs given the opportunity. He had the confidence of a Fortune 500 CEO. And I, I just really, I guess you would just have to say that in my younger days, Charles Paul just fascinated me. I don't know any other way to say it. And as good any other re as any other reason to go, I went because I wanted to honor my dad's desire to go see about his old friend. And I'm so glad I did. Charlie's short-term memory wasn't all that great, but he lit up when he saw my dad. Tell me, what in the world are you doing here? Well, I saw your brother last week in New Mexico, and he told me you were living here now, my dad said. So I told him I was going to come see you. That's real nice, Talmadge, said Charlie. Man, I sure loved your folks. We had a lot of great times together. There was talk of the good old days when Charlie would come visit us in Oklahoma. He and Daddy talked about golf and nice cars and church. Um, and... Uh, there was uh, a, a little bit of more talk about my mom. He asked about her. And he even remembered my brother Jeffrey and me a little bit. Um, it had been decades since we'd seen each other. Eventually, my dad said, well, Charlie, it's about time we headed back. I just wanted to come over today and tell you I love you and I appreciate you. Mind if I pray for you before we go? My dad reached over toward Charlie's wheelchair and grabbed his hand. And as my dad's prayers often do, he began with our loving Heavenly Father. Daddy prayed and Charlie closed his eyes a lot tighter than I closed mine. As my father talked to the Heavenly Father, I saw Charlie's eyes filling with tears. It was apparent in that moment that Charlie's heart and mind were as in tune as any of a thousand songs he had sung across his lifetime. We said our goodbyes and told him in April we'd be in touch, but not before Charlie had removed his proud-to-be-a-Christian golf hat. <laughs> he insisted my dad take it. Daddy resisted briefly and then put it on his head, and we headed out the door to the car. On the way home, we stopped by the Nazarene Church in Cookville because Daddy wanted to drop off his contact info so the pastor could maybe follow up with an occasional visit to Charlie. Charlie passed away a few short months later, and I don't know that um, we had any opportunity, honestly, to be in touch again after that time, but I'll always remember that day. I saw God that day nine years ago, and many, I guess you could say myriad other times since. But that day, God's hands sure looked a lot like my dad's. How many times do we have an opportunity to do something good for the sake of another person? How many times do we take advantage of that opportunity? And how many times do we let that opportunity pass? I guess probably because my dad is headed down to Texas to say goodbye to a friend at a funeral. There's a, there's a sense in which I'm thinking about how precious those times are and when we have an impulse to do something for someone else, if we have an impulse to give somebody a call, shoot them a text, um, maybe even write them a handwritten note um, to encourage them, to let them know that they – are known and loved and remembered. I think when those impulses hit us, I think that's God's way of using us to do the work of God in, in this world. It's a noisy world. It's a bitter world. It's a divided world, but it doesn't have to be. 
it doesn't have to be always, and it certainly doesn't have to be as long as it depends on us in a sense to um, let people see God today and let people see that God maybe looks a lot like us. That's episode 40. I know it's a little shorter than usual, but I got to get back to playing with my grandkids here. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time here on Michael in the Middle. Until then, get out there in the middle of doing something good for somebody else. You'll be glad you did. And, and, and it will make a huge difference in the life of somebody. Thanks for being here.